What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the BTR Garage. My name is Justin. In today's video, we're gonna be installing a dash cam on my 2022 Toyota GR86. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, why are we installing a dash cam in the car in the first place? Well, just like you can guess, we wanna be able to record any activity, potential accident damage or accidents that might happen in the new car. And we also have one in our other new car, our Hyundai Palisade as well. And the reason why we got into dash cams just about a year or so ago, my wife got blindsided and hit by another driver. Somebody pulled out in front of her in an intersection and just ran right into her. Nothing my wife could do. She tried to evade, but anyways, got kind of T-boned going through the intersection. Fortunately, the speeds weren't too high and nobody was hurt, although quite a bit frazzled and scared, obviously from that type of event. So after that, we kind of decided, okay, let's get dash cam for the cars and the cars that we might get in the future. We picked up a dash cam from a company called 70 My or 70 MAI. Got that installed on my wife's car and I was fortunate enough to get a demo model or an early release model of their latest camera that is coming out called the M500. Now this M500 dash cam is actually pretty advanced, at least from what I've seen in dash cams these days. Super high resolution coming in at 1944p, almost twice that of a 1080p camera. Has an ultra wide 170 degree viewing angle so you get to see a whole lot of viewing angle in front of the car. HDR technology, which allows it to capture video even in darker or lower light types of settings. It even has a built-in GPS and GLONASS capability so it can actually track your trips and your activity when you're driving in the car, as well as pinpoint the location of an accident or an incident if that were the case, just because it has that capability to record location information. It has its own built-in storage, no need for an extra SD card or anything like that. And it has the option for full 24-hour parking surveillance with a little add-on kit. I'll show you the kit in this video. We're not actually going to install it, however, but it does have that capability. If you want full 24-hour surveillance, the camera can actually activate based on on shock or other activities and start the recording when the car is even off. Another cool thing about the M500 is it can actually be a tire pressure monitoring system. You do have to buy the tire pressure sensors themselves, but once you have those, you can actually link those with the dash cam and monitor tire pressures. Something that could be really handy on older vehicles that don't have a TPMS system built into the car. So that covers the basics of the M500 dash cam. We're gonna open up the box and then install it on the GR86 and see how it performs. We'll go ahead and open things up. Here is that other hardware kit that I told you about. We'll open that up second. For now, we'll get into the box of the main kit. Looks like we have user manual stuff potentially in here. Yeah, user manual, some sort of installation pieces, I would imagine. Set that aside. The dash cam itself. Nice little units, look like the on off button on the side there has a USB-C for the charging. So a nice modern and common cable, put that over there. Inside looks like we have the mount for it. Yeah, there we go, that's where it would mount to your windshield. So you can adjust that angle depending on how you want it mounted in your car. And then the camera I would imagine Let's see, probably slides in there somehow. <laughs> probably should read the instructions first, but this looks like the way it, oh yeah, there's actually two arrows. So slide that into place. It actually clicks into place. All right, what else do we have here? Oops, looks like an adapter for your 12 volts power supply. If you don't have an actual USB connection in your car, we do have a USB connection in the GR86, so we'll put that aside for now, hopefully. All right, what's on this side? Looks like we have our cable, a nice long USB cable with our USB-C and then a standard USB to connect into the car. And what looks to be a trim tool of sorts, maybe to help us pull trim aside to route the cable. Set that over there and this just looks like another adhesive sticker for the mount itself. And then taking a look at our hardware kits. Again, this is the optional accessory if you want 24 hour surveillance. This is gonna be an actual hardwired cable system, which is a little more advanced and complex to wire into your car. You probably wanna wire this into an active 12 volt power supply. As you can see, we got raw wires here that we would need to wire into probably the fuse box on the car. And then it has your USB-C that goes to 
the camera. And then what I would imagine is the shock sensor here. That is what detects if there's activity on your car and then initializes the recording. So that's a pretty cool option. Again, we're not gonna do that in this video. We're gonna keep it simple and just install the camera itself. One thing I would recommend doing before you install the dash cam into your car is get the mobile app download it onto your phone, add the dash cam per the instruction manual instructions, and you can power up the camera just by using a battery pack like I have here, using the cord that it came with and plugging it in. Hit the power button on the side. Turning on Wi-Fi hotspot. Start recording video. Wi-Fi hotspot is on. So as you might have heard, the Wi-Fi hotspot turns on, which allows you to connect to the device. So let's take the dash cam. We're gonna head over to the GR86 here. And we'll see if we can set up the cameras and show you where we're going to install it. Basically right up here behind the mirror. And then we have to run the cable through the headliner down the A pillar and then underneath the dash to get all the way over <laughs> to where our USB cable or USB port is in the car there. So as I mentioned, we're gonna place the camera kind of right up here in this area. I grabbed a microfiber towel. We're just gonna wipe off any residue that might be on the windshield before we apply the little electrostatic sticker. So if you remember these little clear things that I showed you earlier in the video, you actually place this on the windshield before you place the adhesive from the camera mount itself. So we peel back the little cover on it like that and it's not sticky, but when it hits the windshield, it acts very sticky. So you wanna make sure you place it just where you want the camera to go and kind of start with one corner and one edge and slowly kind of feed it out because you don't want any air bubbles in there. And first we're gonna kind of eyeball where we want to place it. So we're gonna stick that like that on the windshield and you can kind of see where the camera lines up here. Make sure it has good line of sight out the front of the car, which it does. So we'll take our cover off of the sticker and carefully place it into the dotted lines on the mount. And that should be good and mounted, feels pretty solid. Once we get the camera connected back to the app, we'll be able to see visually the orientation of the camera and adjust it accordingly to make sure we're, we're shooting at the right position facing out the front of the car. The next part of the process is obviously running the cable to your USB port on your car plug in this cable and I'm not going to show this whole process because obviously it differs based on the car that you have but on the GR86 the Subaru BRZ it's pretty easy to kind of just fish the cable up into the crack in the headliner I haven't done anything to the headliner it's just normally like this you can kind of push it in there with your finger and kind of feed the cable I'll feed this through to the A pillar this is where that little tool comes in handy that was in the kit once we fish this through the top, we can kind of open up this gap here in the A-pillar and just use it to kind of push the cable into the groove until we get all the way around. We'll put some light on that, but now you can kind of see where the cable fits in the crack on the A-pillar here. We just kind of run this around to the trim on the side of the door. And this is little rubber section. So right here, you can pull this rubber away, fish the cable up in there, and then kind of feed it down the A pillar as well. I can't even do this one handed. This is super awkward. <laughs> you see the rubber pulled back and you feed the cable through, go all the way down the A pillar and we'll go around the side back here and then underneath the glove box. Eventually, all the way over back to the middle of the car. So my cable is pretty much routed now. It's not the perfect setup, but actually came out pretty good. The cable, as you can see, is nowhere to be found on the A-pillar. Or down the side here, it's actually in that crack there. 
and it goes right underneath through that area underneath the glove box and actually turned out pretty good. So the cable actually comes in over in this area and there's these little flaps back here. You can kind of see that, that stick back. That makes it a perfect routing area to tuck the cable back behind there. And it just goes back along this side. There's another one of those little flaps right there if you can see it sort of coming out. And then the cable just goes to the interior dash piece right there or interior panel piece right there and the cables tucked under all along here all the way back to the back of the center console area and you can see where I have to bring the cable up right there from underneath that's about the only crappy part <laughs> about it but then it does go into the USB port in there now we have the dash cam powered up You've connected to the Wi-Fi on it. We gotta go through a little setup. This is what it looks like when you first set it up for the first time. And now you can actually see, hopefully there, that I've got the picture of my camera. If I move it up on the dash, I just lowered it. You can see it lower, raise it up to a more appropriate angle. And we should be ready to go to the next page. I don't have the parking surveillance installed, so I'm gonna hit next. There's voice commands available, as you can see, take a photo, shoot emergency video, record audio, stop audio, enable hotspot, disable hotspot. Start recording video. So we're actually in recording mode now. If I was to go for a drive, obviously we're gonna record video to the onboard memory on the camera, and then it would show up in albums. I'm gonna go to albums and say confirm. Stop it's gonna recording stop recording. Video. And as you can see, you've got my face when we did test videos earlier. <laughs> Let's go to the categories and all videos. There are a bunch of videos on the camera, but that's how you kind of go back and review the videos that you had. So we'll go out for a drive and see what it actually looks like on the road. So I want to try one of the voice commands. You heard me go over them earlier. One of them is to take a still image I don't want to trigger it, <laughs> but let's give it a try. Take a photo. It actually took a photo. You could hear the, and <laughs> there it goes again. So it's a little sensitive to take a photo. So you can take a still image of anything that you want while you're driving in the car, which is kind of cool. I think there were a few other voice commands that worked as well. that it said starting to record emergency video I wonder if that's because it felt my sudden fast turn in the car and a little bit of bouncing and bumping when we made the turn that was interesting I'd be kind of curious what that looks like on the recording phone app Ooh, it just said recording complete so it seems like it senses when there is some um, abnormal activity in the driving or maybe an evasive maneuver or something like that so that's kind of cool it has a little bit of auto detection in for emergency types of situations it grabs a specific video for that particular incident or potential incident all right we'll pull into the garage and see if we can get some of the video off of the camera and see what it looks like after getting a chance to review the video from the dash cam, I can say that the video quality is pretty dang good. The high resolution coupled with the HDR technology and the quality of the camera sensor makes for a really good image. It's clear, the colors stand out, the definition is good, and overall just a really good image and camera. One thing I'm not personally a fan of is the fisheye view on the lens. I would just prefer a wide angle view that you might find on a GoPro camera or something like that. On the plus side, that fisheye lens does give you that 170 degree kind of wide angle view up and down and all around. <laughs> so you do get the benefits of a stretched viewpoint with that fisheye lens coupled with the 170 degree viewpoint that the camera does have. You'll also notice there are some values on the lower part of the video, 70, 65 kilometers per hour. Obviously I did not set my camera to 
miles per hour <laughs> like it should be but that is customizable in the settings you can also turn off and on some of those pieces of information in the camera so we'll take a closer look at those settings right now as you can see all kinds of stuff that you can change from video encoding the frame rate and resolution as I mentioned earlier it has that fisheye kind of square viewpoint you can actually change it to 1920 by 1080p a 16 by 9 or widescreen view if you like you can turn off the collision sensitivity or lower or raise the sensitivity if you do like to keep it on the voice control you can turn on or off the speaker volume you can turn on or off or raise or lower the volume as well as many other features that you can turn on or off the M500 also has a more advanced setting called ADAS or Advanced Driver Assistance System. This is one of those advanced systems that will warn you if a car is too close in front of you or decelerating quickly or you're deviating from your lane. So pretty awesome capability from a dash cam. You usually only find those on modern cars with their advanced driver assistance systems. Unfortunately, I did not get an opportunity to test that one out. Maybe we'll do that one in a future video. But overall, a good little unit and coupled again with the smart control, the voice features, things like that, makes for an overall good package. So we're gonna wrap it up for the M500 dash cam from 70My. This thing is pretty cool. I'm looking forward to trying it out on my everyday commutes and daily driving. If you have any thoughts, comments, or questions on the camera, on the basic installation process, please leave them down below. I would love to hear from you. If you're interested in buying the M500 camera, I do have links down in the description. And that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Hopefully see you guys in the future. Stay safe out there. I am checking out and we'll talk to you all next time.